Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be explaining all of the rounds in a 110 country streak that I got on a diverse world without moving. This is the first time I've ever had triple digits on ADW streaks, so I'm really really proud of this. Now, there are some rounds that took me very little time, and some that took me a long time. So there's going to be a lot of pausing and skipping ahead throughout this video as I explain each round. If you want to see the full, unedited version of this run, you can check out my VODs channel, there's going to be a link to the video in the description. Okay. Well, let's get started here and just get into these rounds and I'll be explaining as much as I can and pausing when necessary. So the first round here, you can see we have this white Google car and it's a kind of mountainous location here. So just sort of the vibe of this place is characteristic of Malaysia. Uh, white Google car is pretty common there and it definitely felt more like Borneo. You get more of these like isolated mountains and things in Borneo. I mean, the peninsula is mountainous too, but just had a bit more of a Borneo vibe. And a lot of rounds like this are purely based on instinct, uh, most of the time at least. So, next round here. This one we have lots of Chinese characters, and it's Gen 4 camera coverage, as you can see, uh, which means we are going to be in Taiwan. That is pretty much the only place possible. Also driving on the right to differentiate it from Hong Kong. So for this round here, we have a pretty short antenna. And then we also had Cyrillic, which is going to pretty much just put us in Russia. We were very far south there. In round number four, we have another white Google car. We're driving on the left here, and we have a single white road line in the center. So these things are all very characteristic of Indonesia. And again, given those trees and the landscape and things. In this round, this one went pretty fast. So if you didn't catch it there, uh, there is this little bollard thing here on both sides of the road. Those are found in Ecuador, and this kind of road is also characteristic, this sort of concrete road uh, with these lines as well. Very characteristic of Ecuador. So that's the first five done, and we're getting into game number two here. So this round I think I spent a little bit of time on. You can see we have these short dashed lines on the side of the road, very Mediterranean looking mountain. I couldn't really see the license plate on that car. Uh, but dash lines are found quite a lot in France for the most part, so that's where I ended up going, and it was right. Next one again, we have dashed lines, and this is also Gen 4 coverage, and these are the longer dashed lines. I'll go back a little bit here. So these lines are longer in comparison to Sweden. Sweden also uses dash lines in Scandinavia, but they are shorter. It can be kind of tricky to tell here. This one is a little bit tougher to see, uh, but these are the longer lines, which is going to put us in Norway. So for this round here, you can see at the bottom of the screen we have those mirrors and this sort of silver-gray car in combination with this landscape that's going to put us in Kyrgyzstan. So pretty much you can instantly recognize it with that. Next one here, we had white road lines and those signs and bollards are Polish, as you can see right there. Very characteristic of this country. So those are good to look for. And then in round number 10, we had a long antenna and Hebrew writing, which of course is going to put us in Israel. And then after that round, I got rate limited by GeoGuessr, so <laughs> I had to press the Are You a Human button, confirm that I'm not a robot. So it took a few minutes to get this sorted out and disappear, so we're going to skip ahead to the next round. And as you can see, I did successfully get Israel there, so getting into game 3 now. This round is almost tricked me up, actually. I thought it was Argentina at first, but then I realized there's no way this is Argentina. Sun is in the south here. Uh, it does look very similar to Argentina, but it's going to be Canada with those rail crossing signs that I saw right at the start. Those, I believe, are not American. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I'm not sure if they're specific to Canada, but that style helps you differentiate it from the U.S. at least. Next round here, we have a black car, and then this sort of rolling hills landscape with those trees is something very characteristic of Uruguay. It's a good way to tell it apart from Argentina. You don't really get landscapes like this here. But those two countries can look pretty similar, but these trees, this hill, sort of landscape and everything, very characteristic of Uruguay. Good way to recognize it. If you get a feel for this landscape, you're almost definitely going to be in Uruguay. Next one here, we have Canadian road signs, Canadian speed limit sign as well, this one with kilometers per hour, and it says maximum at the top, that's the Canadian version. Again, another great trick to tell it apart from the US. For this round, we have this pole here, which is found in France. I'm not sure if I zoom in a bit more. Yeah, there you go, you can see this one a bit better. It has this sort of stepladder look. There are some other stepladder poles, but this design is the French one. 
And then round 15 here, we again have a black car with Spanish, but this landscape, in comparison to Uruguay, is much more dry and flat and open like this. I mean, you can get landscapes kind of like this, but just with the sort of grasses and crops, it's much more of an Argentinian landscape, as opposed to Uruguay. Uruguay just has a very distinct look to it. Alright, on to round 16 here. This one was actually interesting. It's sort of nighttime coverage here, but these are the Swedish dashed lines. You can see that they're pretty short compared to the Norway ones. We also have this long antenna with a white car, which is very common in Sweden as well. But yeah, the night coverage kind of <laughs> took me by surprise for a second there. Next one here is once again going to be in Canada. We have those township road signs, which I believe are only found in Canada. I'm not sure if they're province specific or anything, but you get those in Canada. And those orange and black crossing cones there too, also found in Canada. So, good tricks there once again. Round 18 is, I believe, Canada again. We have French there, which is going to put us in Quebec, of course, as opposed to one of the English-speaking provinces. This round, we had that sort of brick stone building, and then again, these sort of French poles, as you can see there. We'll go back a little bit. Yep, you can see the stepladder design. I'll pause right there. You can see that stepladder design once again. So a great way to tell France apart from something like Belgium or the UK. This round, this is one of the Baltic states. Baltic rounds can be very, very tough, especially when you're in very rural spots like this with no poles or anything. Poles and bollards are the best way to tell these countries apart. But this one is purely a vibes-based guess. It felt a little bit more like Estonia to me than anything, so I went for it and was hoping for the best. Very, very nervous. I was happy I got it, though. I've been screwed over by Baltic toss-ups way too many times to count, so we got that one done successfully. In this round, those bollards in the distance are the Australian variety, so a great way to tell it apart right away. In this round, it took me a little bit to just get my bearings here. I was checking on the language there. You can see that it's a Romance language, uh, but it wasn't going to be Italy. The license plates are not Italian, and they're also not Portuguese, so it pretty much has to be Spain here. The next one has Mexican poles. Mexico has these sort of octagon, hexagon shaped poles like this. Now, other countries have similar ones. The Philippines, uh, Colombia sometimes can have ones like this. But the pole, again, in combination with the landscape. This is a very southern Mexican looking landscape. This one I went very fast with. Uh, but we have these all white road lines. And again, these trees are Australian and the bollards just in the distance there. So again, it's just getting a feel for these little tricks. Once you get a feel for them, you can pretty much recognize right away. This again, this is the characteristic Uruguay landscape. These very sort of slow rolling hills, green grass, and these kinds of trees as well. Alright, with that we are 25 countries in, so about a quarter of the way through the run. Next one here, we have a long antenna with a white car. Now this is a pretty unusual landscape, uh, but you get that in a few countries. As I mentioned before, Sweden is one of them, uh, but Iceland as well. And this landscape, this sort of volcanic, rocky place, is much more characteristic of Iceland. For this round, we had these sort of thin stepladder hole poles, as well as this pedestrian crossing sign. I believe I zoom in on it. There we go. Uh, that one with no lines in combination with these poles is going to put us in Poland. I believe Austria also has a similar sign, but they have different poles. So, great way to tell Poland apart there. Next one. Oh, just paused it too fast. Let's see if I can get it. Here we have the Tunisian follow car right here. It's this sort of dark green, I think a Mazda, with the red license plate. That is the Tunisian follow car. It follows the Google car all around the country. So if you see that behind you, you're going to be in Tunisia. Another really great, fast way to tell it apart. But here, once again, you can see we have French language, but we had those French poles. Again, you probably caught it there. For this round, we have more meta. We have these mirrors and bars on the car with a single yellow line is going to put us in Guatemala. For round 31, we have a yellow front license plate and back license plate, which is pretty much going to put us in everyone's guaranteed. In combination with the architecture, this blue street sign as well is the Dutch variety. Uh, Luxembourg does have Gen 4 coverage now, but this is Gen 3. I think there is a little bit of Gen 3 somewhere in Luxembourg, but this is just such a Dutch town with the architecture as well as the street sign. 
Next round up actually took me a bit by surprise. I'd never seen a pole like that with the red and white stripes, but this sort of gateway thing there, I'll show it again. That arch thing is very characteristic of Thailand and Cambodia, but we're driving on the right here, so we're going to be in Cambodia. Thailand drives on the left. But yeah, that signpost there was very interesting. I had never seen anything like that. I don't know if that's a Cambodian thing or not. Uh, for this round, we have Cyrillic there on the bridge sign, and then these pretty tall mountains, which were making me think we're going to be out around here by Kazakhstan, Mongolia. You get mountains there like this. That's where I guessed, and thankfully it was there. And the next one, we once again have a prevalence of Cyrillic all across these signs, and a .ru domain, which of course is for Russia, very far east there. Uh, next around here, we have look at language looking like Indonesian or Malaysian, uh, but if you can see this guy right here, this guy has this very unique attire on his head. That is an Indonesian hat. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but you see images like this across the country, and that's very common to see in Indonesia. So, good way to tell it apart from Malaysia if you're not sure. Alright, on to round 36, we have a very flat landscape here. Poles over there are North American style. They are just sort of wooden sticks, uh, but this sign right here is the biggest clue to tell apart US and Canada again. It's this sort of T-junction sign here, but it's got this checkerboard design on the outside. It's a little bit hard to see here because it's far away, but that sign is found only in Canada, not the US. You're not going to see a sign like that in the US. So, you ever see that? You're definitely in Canada. The next one here, we have Singaporean road signs there. And also, that one building there, I'll pause on it here, uh, that's very famous in Singapore. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I'm sure you've seen it before. Very, very famous building. Next one up, we've got uh, what looks like German language on the billboard there. I couldn't actually read it too well there, but in hindsight it's German, and that sign there on this building is much more clearly German. And that was Gen 4 coverage, so to tell it apart from Germany, uh, Germany doesn't have Gen 4, it only has Gen 2 coverage, so if you get Gen 4 and it's German language, you are pretty much going to have to be in Austria. The next round here, we've got a short little antenna on the car, and then again we have this sort of octagon, hexagon pole. Also, these North American style license plates, they're similarly shaped to the US ones, as you can see, so all signs here are pointing to Mexico. And it also says Tabasco on this sign, which is a state in Mexico. And that is where I guessed. Here we once again have the Guatemalan Google car with those mirrors. And again, this is a very Latin American landscape with this sort of architecture. And then in combination with the car, you know you're going to be in Guatemala right away. Okay, we are 40 rounds in, approaching the halfway point, slowly but surely. This round is Gen 2 coverage. You can tell Gen 2 coverage from the circular blur of the car, and you also get a circular, like, halo thing in the sky as well. The second generation of Google cameras. And so you find that a lot in South Africa, especially with this landscape and these signs and trees and everything. Uh, very characteristic of South Africa, much more so than Australia. It can be tricky to tell this apart, though. So this round, you can see we have Spanish on that sign. Now, this one was kind of tricky. We have a black car again, which is going to put us in either Uruguay, Argentina, or Peru. Now, this landscape is nothing like Peru. It is much more of a temperate, subtropical climate. Peru is more desert and tropical and mountainous. So, this is not Peru. We can rule that out. Now, the question becomes, is it Uruguay or is it Argentina? And again, if you noticed in the two Uruguay rounds we had before, we have similar trees here. It's this similar sort of foliage and sort of look to it, very flat as well. And in addition to that, Uruguay is overcast a lot in its coverage, and you can see here it's very cloudy. Um, so a little bit of a meta there as well. Uh, but again, it's just those trees that are really distinct for Uruguay. Uh, next round here, we have this road sign, which is found in Denmark only. And then if I go back a little bit, you can see these arrows on the ground. This style is, I believe, exclusive to Denmark. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I, you do see that a lot in Denmark as well. And next around here, we have a Mongolian Google car. There are a few varieties of this one, but 
I'm not sure where they're found. There is a great document on Mongolia by Kamu. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to learn about Mongolian coverage. But this is one of the many Mongolian places with this car. And round number 45, this one was a little bit tricky for me. So we have a single white line in the middle of the road here, driving on the right. European license plate on the car. Now this was making me feel like Croatia, Slovenia. We just had a short antenna on the car. Now the biggest thing here for me, personally at least, was this one building up on the hill. That one right there. That architecture is much more characteristic of Slovenia and maybe Austria as well, but not so much Croatia. So I'm not 100% sure that you'll never find something like this in Croatia. So that house, in combination with the landscape as well, it's more mountainous and forested here. You can see that I wasn't 100% sure yet. It can be pretty tricky, these two countries. But just based on that house, I was feeling much more Slovenia. And again, it is more mountainous and forested in comparison to other parts of Croatia. Like out here it gets very flat, and here is more of a Mediterranean look. Uh, but this part up here can look very, very similar to Slovenia, so be careful. Alright, so getting into the next seed here. This is a very classic Brazil round. I can pretty much recognize Brazil right away. If you take a look at the road style here, I'll pause on it. If you take a look at this style of road, I don't know how you'd really describe it, but it's this double yellow line. I mean, you have that in a lot of countries, but there's something about this road. This is a very Brazilian road. Brazil also has a very red soil and these sort of rolling hills in the agricultural areas. You get that a lot in the sort of south central part of the country. As you can see there, we were in the state of Goiás. Next round, we're on a very narrow street. We once again have Spanish language which, of course, is going to put us in Spain. This isn't a very typical architecture for Latin America. Uh, narrow streets like this, much more classically uh, in Spain itself. Next around here was kind of interesting. We can see that pole right here. Now, it looks kind of similar to the ones you get in Brazil and places like that. However, this is not going to be Brazil for one key reason. Uh, number one is this architecture. This is very characteristic of Nigeria. Uh, next, also, we do have an African person here, so it does help in GeoGuessr. I mean, it should take everything with a grain of salt, of course, but of course, you should use the cultures of the people that you can see to your advantage. Uh, next around here, we again have Meta, as well as a very characteristic landscape. Uh, these mountains are very classically found in the Faroe Islands, as well as this Google car that you can see there at the bottom with those mirrors. So those two things combined are going to put us in the Faroe Islands. And round 50 here, we have very famous meta in the GeoGuessr community. That is one of the Kenya snorkel cars. There is also a variety with a white car and a larger snorkel thing on the right side. But this one is the other variety, so you see that, you're in Kenya, no doubt about it. And that's 50 rounds, so we are about halfway through now. Getting into the actual halfway point game. Oh, this round, this round took me a while, so I'm gonna explain it as best as I can here, and then skip ahead once I've said everything I can, because I did spend a bit of time really thinking about this. So, what we can see right off the bat is that this is Gen 2 coverage. Now, Gen 2 is not found in every country. There are a limited amount of countries that you can get this in. And now, in combination with this landscape, this is a kind of Mediterranean-European feel to it. We're definitely going to be in Europe here with these trees. So, of the countries in Mediterranean Europe that have Gen 2, we've got Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, and Greece. So those are really the five only options that we have to work with here. So it's really just going to come down to taking in the landscape here and trying to figure out where we're going to be. Now, this doesn't feel extremely French. That was what I was thinking. I thought France maybe is possible, but I definitely ruled out Portugal and Greece right away. They just have more of a distinct look to them. You don't really get this kind of foliage in those countries. So I went back a little bit here. I want to show these trees right here that I've zoomed into. Those are what made me think Italy the most. I'm not sure what it is or what they are, but you get trees like this planted in this way quite a lot in Italy. And now what I was thinking was, you you can see that in like Spain and maybe even France as well, but it was very green, so I was kind of ruling out Spain. Spain has more of a semi-arid feel in a lot of places. In France, there's just something off about this place to be France. Again, this is a very, very vibes-heavy round, just using the limited amount of clues that we can get. So, those trees, in combination with the Mediterranean landscape and the vibes of this place, led me to guess Italy in the end. 
I was really, really happy with that. Was not sure that I was going to be right, but thankfully we got it. Here, this is a classic Russian location. Russia really likes to put tons of bollards by their intersections. So <laughs> if you see a road like this with all these bollards, as well as this sort of just general landscape feel as well, and these poles too, just all signs here point to Russia. But Russia loves to just spam bollards by intersections. Well, went too far ahead there, but we had the other Kenya car here. Oh, I've gone too far. <laughs> there we go. That is the other Kenya snorkel car. The white and silver kind of color with the larger one on the right side. So again, if you see that, you're in Kenya for sure. This round I went very fast on. This is low cam coverage. I'll show it again here. So this is low camera coverage. Low cam is found in four countries, I believe, only. Yes. Uh, Switzerland, Japan, infrequently Taiwan, and in Gen 4 coverage in Sri Lanka. So kind of random assortment of countries. But this landscape is very Japanese. We have a single yellow line, which I think is only found in Japan out of the four countries I named. So yeah, landscape, road lines, low cam makes you insta-guess Japan. Again, just get a feel for that and you'll recognize Japan right away. Next round here, you can see these sort of small red text license plates on these cars in combination with the landscape puts you in Belgium. That's pretty much the only place you'll see anything like this. All right, with that, we are exactly halfway through, so 55 more rounds to go. This round, we have double yellow lines. We've got blue street signs, and we also have a thing there on the street sign that says Ozark County. The Ozarks are mountains found in Missouri and Arkansas, so that place name is almost certainly going to just put you in the U.S. Here, once again, we have Locam in Japan. Very East Asian architecture, the Locam once again, and the language too. So, again, very easy to get Japan out of that. Here we had the Kenya snorkel once again. Don't need to explain that one, you've seen it now. Here is Swedish uh, antenna and dashed short lines, so instantly recognize Sweden with that. And round 60, uh, we've got a long antenna car here. This one kind of confused me for a little bit here, because this landscape is a little bit odd, but I was thinking it was going to have to be Russia. Russia has a long antenna car in a lot of places, and I was thinking, you know, this is the kind of landscape you'd get in just like random Far East Russia somewhere. So I went for the guess, and it was random Far East Russia. Didn't guess there, but in hindsight it makes sense that it was out there. Okay, on to round 61. Uh, this time we have this pole, once again, similar to the Nigeria ones, but the landscape architecture is not Nigeria one bit. This is much more of a Brazil landscape, and this pole is the Brazilian variety as well. And this feels more like North Brazil, with this sort of flatness and the sort of tropical foliage too. Here, once again, we ended up in Brazil. We've got the same pole. Brazil also sometimes likes to paint the bottom of them white, so if you see that, you're going to be in Brazil again. And again, that was North Coast too. Okay. <laughs> Next around here, we have a white car and a very sort of Southeast Asian looking landscape. This sort of architecture, these brown roofs and this lamp thing, the palm trees, very characteristic of Southeast Asia. Uh, now, I wasn't really sure what this language was there. I was thinking this was almost Cambodia at first, but that's not going to be right with the language. So now I was thinking more Indonesia. So again, in comparison to Malaysia, you don't really get architecture like this in Malaysia. And again, it's just more of the vibes here. It's felt much more like Indonesia to me. And also the pole. This pole is an Indonesian pole, I believe. Malaysia doesn't really use these three sort of pylon things at the top. They more have just single standalone poles without the stuff at the top. So you see those poles, you're more likely going to be in Indonesia, but it's not entirely foolproof. So I decided to go all the way in Timor. I'm not really sure why I decided to do that, but it was Sumatra, so it didn't matter. Got the country. The next round here, we are driving on the left. That's the back of the Google car, and we also have these signs geared up for the left side of the road. We also have yellow outside lines, which is very common in South Africa. This town as well is very classic of a small South African town, as well as the people that we could see. So, things were pointing to South Africa here. This was just a kind of unusual looking landscape. Not the most classic South African round of all time, but definitely characteristics of it there. For this round, this is going to be Turkey. We've got these bollards here, which are Turkish. They kind of like the Australian ones, except because Turkey drives on the right, so they're going to be sort of flipped in their design. So you'll get the ones with the gray strip on the left side, as opposed to being on the right side in Australia. 
Uh, but then we also have the language on this billboard, which is very, very characteristic of Turkish. Turkish is such a distinct language, lots of unique characters, and it just has a look to it. You'll recognize it right away. On to the next one here. We again have these yellow outside lines, which you get in South Africa. However, you've got to be careful, because sometimes you can be in Eswatini or Lesotho. This landscape is very characteristic of Eswatini. I'll go back a little bit and show it a bit more. Uh, but these sort of dry, rolling mountains and hills, as well as this prevalence of sort of pine trees almost. Characteristic of Eswatini. Again, this is a, one of those countries where you just have to get the vibes down. If you play enough of these rounds, see Eswatini enough, you'll know what it looks like and be able to get it almost instantly all the time. Same goes for Lesotho. It's just got a very distinct look. Next one up here. We've got a sign here, which is Italian language, and this sort of flat agricultural area you see a lot in the Po Valley, which is uh, sort of north of Florence, right there. Next round here, we've got a big mosque. This is actually a repeat for me. If you watched Jiggins' uh, Team Duels tournament a few weeks ago on Twitch, you probably remember this round. This is in Denizli, Turkey. I knew it was a repeat, didn't remember the CD, but there it is. So, see it again? Try and remember. <laughs> Next round here, we have a very classic sort of Colombian Ecuadorian look to it. Uh, these sorts of trees, the mountains and everything, dirt roads. Uh, very characteristic of that area. The one thing that tipped me off for Colombia as opposed to Ecuador though is the black car. You can see here we got the little short antenna and then the car is black. You see this a lot in Colombia, not in Ecuador though, so good way to tell them apart if you're not sure. And this next round here is a very different Australian landscape. It's very flat, lots of red soil and these sort of shrubs and things, very characteristic of like the northern and western parts of Australia. Now I'm no Australia expert, you should refer to zigzag for that kind of stuff, but uh, you get that uh, sort of in that northern area, so yeah. <laughs> oh man, next one up here is a little bit tricky for me. So we had these mountains, it's green, kind of Mediterranean looking. And then we had this language. This first word here was the most critical thing for me to figure out where we were. It's S-H, I'm not sure on the letter here, but then ending in T-E-T. -E -T. And that language is making me think kind of Albania. I wasn't too sure. Architecture definitely checked out with the Albania, sort of Montenegro, Croatia type of area. Sort of along the Adriatic there. And then I panned up, and we have a rift in the sky. Now, you might be familiar with the rifts. Rifts are found in Albania, Montenegro, and Senegal, primarily. So, that's in combination with the language I'd seen. I was thinking probably going to be Albania here, as opposed to Montenegro. I wasn't too sure, though. These countries can screw me up sometimes. But in the end, I decided it's probably going to be Albania, and I decided to go for it. And thankfully, it was there. Next round here, this is a very, very vibes heavy round for me. This is British Columbia in Canada. You can see we have this sort of North American stop signs, license plate and everything. Uh, but these these mountains, this sort of, the way this whole place looks is so characteristic of British Columbia. It's hard to put into words how it looks, but it's so very, very characteristic of that part of Canada. Next round here, we have a black car, and once again, you can see this sign here with the Indonesian hat. Also the flag, I didn't catch that. Uh, but yeah, that hat you see all over the place in Indonesia on signs. I've never seen anyone actually wearing it, but <laughs> it's, it's very characteristic of Indonesia. So, you see that, you're probably going to be there. Round 74 here. Uh, we've got, again, this short antenna with a white car. And then these road signs and that pole. So this is an interesting pole. This is one that you find in Ecuador. It's kind of like the French pole in a way, but a little bit different. And of course it looks very, very different from France. But yeah, that pole is the Ecuador version. So if you see that, you're going to be there. And round 75. We had French language there on the sign. It said Lot Noir, which means black water. And then a lot of French up on these signs here. So it's going to come down to France or Belgium. That street sign is more characteristic of Belgium, as well as that initial sign on the bridge there. This one is more the Belgian style of signage as opposed to France. And again, it's a little bit more of the vibes here. You just get a, get a more Belgian feel out of this. So I went for Belgium there. And that is round number 75. 
So we're about three-fourths of the way through the run. Getting into the next one here, we got a very, very famous meta once again. Uh, this bar is on the car with rifts in the sky, as I said. Albania, Montenegro, Senegal. Senegal is the only one with car meta as well. So if you get the visible car with the rifts and, of course, the landscape as well, very different from Europe, you're going to be in Senegal. So this one had to skip back. I was talking too much about Senegal. We've got yellow license plates here and a long antenna as well. Also yellow outside lines and this sort of look to it. It's Mediterranean, but not quite European. The architecture is a little bit different. And again, the yellow plates are very critical here. You find those in Israel, all over the place. Next round here, we once again have the long Norwegian dashes, as well as that road sign there. That is distinctly found in Norway. Round 79, we have a black Google car, and then this sort of architecture, very Middle Eastern look to it. Uh, this dry, rocky, mountainous landscape as well. Black Google car, though, within the Arab world is only found in Jordan. Next round here, we have again a sort of Mediterranean looking place. This language here is Italian on the sign, so we have that to start. And then we also have Italian license plates. Italy has blue strips on both sides of the plate. Other places that do that are Albania and France too, but French ones are a little bit different. The strip on the right side is less vibrant, so you can see that the right side strip here is very dark blue, so you know for sure that's an Italian plate, in combination with language of course too. And that is round 80 done and accounted for. So we just got 30 rounds left to go, let's get into the next one. Here we have the outline of Brazil right on the building, so <laughs> no explanation needed for this one. Again, you can see the poles there too, if you're never sure. Next around here, we have Gen 2 coverage again, a very savannah looking landscape, and again, you can use the people to your advantage, and you know that you're gonna be in South Africa with all those clues. Round 83, here we have a white car. You can see a little bit of colors on this car. Now, I think this is one that's commonly seen in Cambodia. I'm not too sure on that, uh, but you do get the white car blur like that in Cambodia. Cambodia also has a lot of houses up on stilts, as you can see here, very classically found in that country. Uh, and again, also the red soil, Southeast Asian foliage with these palms and everything. Uh, yeah, the red soil, very flooded, soaky, waterlogged place here. So <laughs> yeah, all these things here in combination point to Cambodia. On to the next round here. This is the first time we've had South Korea this entire time. South Korea has single yellow road lines. Uh, they drive on the right, good way to tell apart from Japan, apart from locam and language. Uh, but they also have visible black car a lot of times too. And a lot of South Korean coverage was taken in the winter as well. So you get a feel for this sort of, you know, dry looking winter mountains as well. Very, very characteristic of South Korea. This round is pretty easy. We've got Greek language there, very recognizable. So easy enough to just send Greece right away. On to round 86. This is very classic German coverage. This is Gen 2. Germany is stuck in Gen 2 coverage. I might have mentioned that earlier in the video. Uh, but yeah, all of Germany coverage is Gen 2. And we also have .de, which is the uh, German domain name. So good clues there. Next round up here, we have a very North American looking landscape. We've got the English, we've got the Poles. Now, this one is going to be a little bit tricky because you get architecture like this in both Canada and the US. Very similar looking countries in a lot of places. So this one comes down to scouring this town, looking for clues, trying to find flags primarily because, you know, Canada and America are both pretty patriotic, especially America. And lo and behold, there was an American flag visible there. So, I guessed Maine, but it was actually Michigan in the Upper Peninsula. Kind of interesting. Here is probably the most famous meta of all. No explanation needed. It's the Ghana Tape. You know the Ghana Tape. Everyone knows and loves the Ghana Tape. Round 89. I actually spent a good amount of time on this round. So, what's going on here is we've got a Google car with no visible meta. I'll go back a little bit and show it again, but... I gotta get past the Ghana round here. <laughs> Have another look at that beautiful tape. But I'll pan down to the car. You can see there's no antenna on the car. So no visible car. That's not very common in Europe. This is a European landscape here. Now within Europe, you get that a lot in Serbia. That's very characteristic of Serbia, to not have any visible antenna. Definitely checks out with the landscape here, this sort of mountainous green area. 
as well as the architecture. You can see a little bit of the building there through the trees. Definitely has that Balkan look to it. Now, I was hesitant to guess Serbia at first here because I thought this might have been a repeat in Romania for me. I had remembered a round sort of like this that I had gotten baited by, so I wasn't too sure. But all the signs here were pointing more towards Serbia. And again, especially with that car, the lack of car, I should say, is very classically found in Serbia. As you can see, after deliberating in my head for a little bit, I ended up just going for Serbia. I figured, might as well try it. It's got to be there. And thankfully, it was there. Next round, I just realized this is the exact same Senegal round as the one we had earlier, I think. Is it? I didn't even notice that when I was playing. Hold on. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Yeah, I think that's the same one. So again, it's Senegal. The bars with the rifts. So that's crazy. How did we get the same Senegal round twice within 90 rounds? But anyway, moving on to round number 91. Here we once again have Gen 2 coverage, and these street signs, which I believe are pretty typical for Luxembourg. And Luxembourg also has yellow plates, sort of like the Netherlands. However, uh, it is this landscape and the architecture as well that sets it apart from the Netherlands. It's this very hilly sort of looking place. And this architecture too. You don't really get buildings like this much in the Netherlands. So in combination with all that, the Gen 2, the landscape, the architecture should put you in Luxembourg. Next right here is instantly recognizable as South Africa, the yellow outside lines, Gen 2, and then also this landscape as well is very typical of South Africa, uh, this sort of dry, dusty area, a little bit of a hilly place. It's going to be more in the western part of South Africa with this landscape. Round 93. This is a very British town over here in the distance, these sort of orange houses with the sort of windows in the front. We can see that we have a yellow back plate, white front plates, which aren't EU, and we're also driving on the left. Kind of hard to tell that here, but the road lines are geared up for left-hand drive, so all of those things combined point to the UK. Round 94 here took a little bit of thinking for, uh, but I was able to zoom in over this way and see that we have the Irish flag. And not only that, if I go back a tiny bit, this diamond yellow sign, uh, you get in Ireland, but not the UK. So those countries can look very, very similar, especially with left-hand drive. Um, but this sign you're never gonna see in the UK. That is an Irish thing only. And of course, Irish flag too. <laughs> that always helps. And around 95 here, you got a big billboard here with a .mx domain, which is, of course, Mexico. So quick enough to just send Mexico. So we're five rounds away from 100, getting down to the final few games here. So moving into the game that brought us up to triple digits, here we have Gen 4 coverage, we've got a billboard for candy, which isn't really relevant, but uh, this sort of landscape, I almost thought this was Singapore first, but there was something off. Uh, we have this sticker, this black sticker on the pole, that is something that is exclusively found on the peninsula side of Malaysia. So if you see that, instantly in Malaysia. Next round here, this is Locam once again, however, this is the Switzerland variety of Locam. Now, the easiest ways to tell Switzerland apart from Japan are they have very different landscapes. Uh, but also these bollards in Switzerland, and also we have a little bit of language, they just have different signs, Switzerland drives on the right. You should almost never confuse Switzerland with Japan. Uh, but Locam, with that landscape, helps you instantly see that it's Switzerland. And this one again, we have short dashed lines, long antenna, Sweden. For this round, we have these double yellow outside lines, which are very common in the UK. You can see the license plate here is white in the front, but it doesn't have a blue stripe for the uh, EU sticker. So, of course, the UK does not have EU plates, uh, so you're going to know that you're not in Ireland because of that. And also the architecture in this town is just very different from Ireland as well. Much more uh, typically British. And round number 100. I actually spent quite a while in this round because I was trying to make sure I didn't screw it up. I wanted to get the triple digits. This has been the farthest I'd ever made it in streaks before. So, if you missed that, that sign there, it says Peru on the sign. So, of course, I'm thinking, probably Peru. <laughs> However, we had water out to the east, which was really confusing to me. Because, of course, Peru is on the west coast of South America. So I was thinking, is it Lake Titicaca? I was not sure at all. It didn't seem right, but I couldn't think where else in Peru we would be, honestly. Uh, the landscape as well wasn't really right for the area around this lake, but 
I couldn't think what else it was going to be. So I spent quite a while just soaking it all in, trying to figure out if we would ever be by like Titicaca. But I was pretty sure it would be Peru. Again, I just wasn't sure because something felt very odd. And it ended up being way farther north. It does get pretty dry like that up north. Much more typical landscape for that part of the country. So i completely forgotten it. Peru had the coasts up there like that. But I'd made it to 100. I was really happy. Alright, moving into the final 10 rounds here. In this round we have Gen 2 coverage and these trees which are very typical of Australia. Uh, now we also have this yellow license plate on the car. If I can pause fast enough, right there. We have a yellow plate on this truck which is I believe found in New South Wales only. I think they might have gotten rid of the yellow plates or have different ones now. I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, but yellow plates, New South Wales. Here this is an Icelandic road sign. Also this language, Velir is a very common Icelandic ending. Also this character, which I believe makes a th sound. Uh, but yeah, that sign and the language are very Icelandic. Also, long antenna and the landscape. Round 103, we had those signs here, which are more common in Indonesia. Uh, I believe um, they're cigarette ads or something. Something to that effect, but yeah, you get signs like that in Indonesia. And again, this architecture, not really something you find in Malaysia. And much more of an Indonesian thing. For this round, we were on a big divided highway with a white car driving on the left as well. So it took me a little bit to come to the conclusion that we were in South Africa here. South Africa has a white goo car like this. And this landscape as well is very typical for South Africa. Next round here we had English on these signs, typical North American street signs as well. This landscape is more characteristic of the US though. Uh, you don't really get anything like this in Canada. It's this sort of dry mountainous area. And it's not super mountainous, more hilly, so you don't really see anything like that in Canada. So if you see that you should be safe guessing US. And our final game here, which will bring us up to 110. On this car, I'll try and get the more zoomed in look at it. Okay, so as you can see on this red Ford, uh, the license plate has a blue strips at the top and the bottom, which is the Minnesota license plate. Now this round does kind of feel like Canada at first glance. It makes sense, Minnesota is much more Canadian looking than a lot of the rest of the country. Uh, but it was really the license plates that did it for me here and let me know that we are going to be in the US and not Canada. So license plates do come in very, very handy, even in country streaks, not in just state or province streaks either. So it's definitely worth learning. Round 107 puts us again into Asia. Now this is different, I don't think we had the Philippines this entire round, but this sort of tricycle vehicle is very common in the Philippines, one of the most common ways to get around the country I believe. Uh, they also like to use concrete roads a lot in the Philippines, and they drive on the right too, so all these things together point to the Philippines. One of the few uh, Southeast Asian countries that drives on the right instead of the left. Around 108, we've got really wide lines here, very interesting, but these poles are the Brazilian kind, again this red soil, and this road is also the Brazilian road. It's hard to put into words the Brazilian road look, but it just has this look to it. So the road, the poles, the red soil, very very Brazilian. Round 109, this is Gen 4 coverage. Now this one you have to be careful with, because it can look a lot like the US or Canada with this sort of landscape. However, this is going to be Argentina. Now the road lines are a big clue here for Argentina. They are all white, so you're not going to see lines like this in Canada or the US. Another big clue is this little sign on the side of the road with black at the top. That is one of the national road markers in Argentina. I'm not sure if you can see them on other roads too, but they're all over the place in Argentinian roads. So if you see that, you're going to be in Argentina. And round 110, the final round that I solved correctly. We have this signpost here, which is a black and white striped one. It's a pretty large pole as well. That is found in Peru. And this sort of tropical landscape, you don't get too many places in Peru like that. There's only a few areas uh, in the north, like middle and south as well. I went for the more north area, and it was the south, of course. <laughs> and getting into the round where I got it wrong. This round was really confusing to me. So we were on a divided highway. Divided highways usually throw me off in country streaks because they sort of just take you away from the general characteristics of a country and just put you on a highway. And that's really all you can see in these kinds of rounds. So I was trying to read this sign in the distance. I couldn't make out what language that was. 
License plates were weird. I mean, they were EU plates, but there was just... I wasn't getting any relevant information. This stoplight was also weird. I wasn't sure what was going on with that. We had all white road lines, which maybe should have clued me in a little bit to this country. And then also, looking at it in hindsight, the font on this bridge sign should have maybe told me more about which country this is. Uh, I was looking at that. I, I was not sure, though. But based on the landscape here, again, these sort of green mountains, not crazy tall, but still relatively respectable mountains. I was thinking Slovenia, Croatia, maybe Italy. Uh, none of those was right, unfortunately. So, after spinning around here just trying to think what the heck am I looking at, in the end, I settled on Slovenia. So I made my guess in Slovenia here, wasn't sure at all, and it ended up being Austria. So Austria and Slovenia are again two countries that can look really similar, especially when you're on a divided highway that sort of cuts out all the sort of cultural differences between the two. But in the end, I'm really proud of this streak. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way through. I hope it was informative. I hope it wasn't too repetitive or hard to follow. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe for more GeoGuessr content, and I'll catch you next time.